Thanks for joining me for this episode of the Church Security Answer, man. Not going to be a pleasant one here because I really want to dig into this with you. I mean, is this your church? And I'm not talking about your actual church in New York. Do you go to this church? You know, we need to talk about it if you do. But I want to know if this is your church somewhere else in the nation or Canada or Australia. Does your church have people stuffed inside right now attending a service while a 60-year-old, 68-year-old woman is getting beat up, receiving a concussion, and I'm not even sure she's going to survive right outside the front doors while you're all sitting in there warm and cozy. I just want to ask, and yeah, am I being direct? Because we talk about this, and it's principles these days, and I still have folks that are like, hey, should we have a church security team? What should we do? And it's this kind of stuff. There's plenty of people around the internet talking about church security, especially here. And I have some other good friends that do it as well. And we need to be getting down to the nitty gritty and talking about this stuff realistically. I mean, this is a terrible situation. 68-year-old woman is a walk into church. Let's get to, here's a little further uh, photo of it. And she has no idea this kid's coming up behind her. And he walks down the sidewalk right behind her, comes up and around her. And by the time she gets to the top of the step, he's staring her in the face and basically punches her. And she goes flying into the air back onto the sidewalk. You can see the videos. I don't really want to get focused on that trauma. But what I want to talk about is if your church is in this situation, because this is terrible. And I what further infuriates me, nothing against the leadership here at this church, but it's everywhere that is not having security, not conducting security, not looking into something, or just somebody. What about somebody in these pews just saying, I think I'm going to go out and stand and watch for people so that I can make sure and kind of take care of people coming into the church, maybe last minute by themselves. What if that's you? Can you just do that if we're not going to be secure? But here's what frustrates me even more is the reality is if you watch this interview, you will hear the leadership of this church say it's sad that somebody got attacked right outside the church doors. And I want to begin to change that. I want to begin to change that dialogue a little bit with you to say it's sad if you're not protecting your people. It's sad that somebody can be attacked. Your church is full of people inside doing their service, and it's sad that somebody four feet from the door is attacked and may lose their life. They're robbed, attacked, and devastating, and they're just outside the door. That, to me, is what's sad. No offense intended as a respect to leadership, but we got to get attention somehow. This is this is ridiculous that we would even say that. Here's the door. I mean, you can see the door is ajar, and she made it to where he's basically standing. She made it to that point when he pushed her and shoved her back and had no concern for her, completely tossed her off the steps. Take a look at the video, you know, and, and realistically, what would it take? What would it take to uh, create a better situation. We'll come back to that slide. Here he is. She's on the ground, suffered a, what I understand, a, a some sort of traumatic fracture, skull fracture, concussion, all of that stuff from going from the top step right down to the bottom step and landed on your head. Uh, this gem of a, a guy then uh, goes through her stuff, goes, gets her purse, and if you watch the video, you'll see he even pats her down to make sure she doesn't have anything else valuable. And then he runs away and steals her car, which it takes him about a day uh, to find uh, her car. And so, you know, I'm simply saying here, as simple as this, you know, and these are just di these are just pictures I put up here. But how much different does it look if you've got people standing out there? Somebody has the nerve, the guts to just stand out there. Do I have to have a security policy and all of that stuff to do that? No. How about I just stand out there? 
and watch my people. If we're coming down to that, I, I know I talk to people almost every day who are wanting to get their policies done and want to think about chart, starting a church security team in the next year when we get our policies and everything in written order and we choose our people. You know, I, I'm simply saying it's time to get something going for your people. When you have a 68-year-old lady who gets attacked right in front of the door where everybody's sitting comfortable and she may lose her life. I haven't had, I haven't heard the re most recent update, but I think it's time for somebody to do something. If you're watching this, I want to encourage you just be the person that has the nerve or the couple of people to say, we're going to stand outside and we're going to make sure that people are okay coming down this sidewalk right here. I mean, you know, as they come down the sidewalk, there'll be a couple of us standing here so that they can feel safe from before church starts until after church starts. We're going to organize our own group and let's get something going. Am I calling for something radical? Absolutely, because this is ridiculous. And this is ridiculous from the standpoint of I'm hearing people say it's sad that somebody attacks our people right outside the church. Well, I got news for you. It's happening everywhere. So what's sad is that we're not doing something about it. And I do, you know, I do apologize if I'm coming across too strong, but I feel strongly about this. No disrespect to authority, those kind of things, but I have to be pretty strong with the idea of what's sad is we're not taking care of our people, finding a way to take care of it. If you're in leadership and you're not taking care of people, that's sad. If you're a person who has the ability to handle yourself and not take care of people and take care of people, and you're not standing out front of a church like this where people could be harmed, especially if you're in high crime areas, my goodness, I hope that I hope that you're doing something to organize and take care of people. If you don't have the policy yet, I'm I'm not an attorney. So I can't say disregard that kind of stuff. But what I am here to say is it's time for us to get going on this stuff. It's time for us to start watching out for our people. They didn't have policies back in the uh, biblical days. They didn't have all that kind of stuff. Somebody stood guard. Somebody took up their sword and stood guard. Now, I'm not saying take up your sword. I'm not saying take up weapons. But I am saying it's time for you and I to stand a post at your church, take a look at the situation, and do something to take care of your people. If you have any ability to do that, I think we need to be organizing that. And then we can say, what can we do to get better organized? What can we do to formalize this to protect the liability of the church? I'm all about protecting the liability of the church. But... I'm all about protecting our people first and foremost. Thanks for joining me. I hope you'll take a look at some of the other videos that aren't so strong in my opinion and my uh, heartfelt message. And also, I hope you'll subscribe. Get involved with our community. We want to help you be a more safe church. We want to help you to be safer at church. And we want to help your people to be safer also. So. Thank you for joining us. Take a look at this video right here. It is another great video for you to take a look at in your journey in church security. Thank you.